Oh my goodness. It's going to hatch on camera. What is happening? What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, uh, well you just saw. Very unfortunate. Pingu laid her eggs on the dry side of the Laban. I don't know what she was thinking. I don't even know why there was a dry side, but I don't know what she was thinking. So you saw that those eggs had dents in them. It is possible for permeable eggs to rehydrate themselves, but one of those eggs was probably too far done. I did candle both and one definitely has a good chance it's just a dent on the end of the egg the other one is like halfway dented in nonetheless we'll give them both a shot they might reabsorb the water and do just fine now despite that very sad news i'm here to share with you all that pingu's second clutch has hatched fortunately i did not catch it on the night vision camera as you've seen i've done in the past with her first clutch but what's interesting about this clutch hatching is that both animals do not appear to be lily whites. Now, as you may or may not know, the lily white gene is quite interesting. It's actually a co-dominant trait, which means that the gene is passed on to some of the offspring. So you'll get some offspring that are lily whites and others that are not. Now, what's also interesting about the lily white gene is by breeding two lily whites together, they produce what we call a super form expression animal and this is a solid white or leucistic animal unfortunately no one has produced an offspring in this form that has survived past hatching or the egg so it's really frowned upon to do this naturally because it doesn't yield anything and it's kind of cruel. A lot of the offspring will develop completely and just never hatch, so why do that? Discovering the super form or dominant trait tells us that the lily white gene is a visual heterozygous gene. So pretty cool stuff. I won't get too far into the genetics, but the point of the matter is we've hatched two lily whites from this pairing and now we're gonna see what two offspring look like when they're not lily whites they're hatched and i gotta tell you right off the bat they have some crazy head structure but before we get into that i want to show you guys something kind of interesting and that is with nona's first egg that has yet to hatch very weird stuff here but let's take a look so you may remember that Nona had this really weirdly shaped egg. Her first egg that you gave me, and I noticed a few days ago that I thought it was uh, pipping. It was leaking, but maybe within 24 hours of that leak, nothing had emerged. In the past, I've had crested geckos pip and they ended up dying in the egg. This happens very rarely and I'm really not one who uh, personally agrees with egg cutting. I, I personally feel that the animal's meant to hatch, it will if it's healthy. But I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try. I, I, I just wanted to give that baby a chance to survive. Now here's where things get weird. So I made a slit here and I thought the baby was dead. I cut this part of the shell and then I cut this part here. And after I had cut this side, that was when I discovered the baby is not dead, is very much alive. I don't know how this happened, why it was already pipping, but like hasn't come out of the egg. I don't want to remove it from the egg because it wants to stay in there. So I'll allow it to stay in as long as it wants. I was a bit concerned about, for example, mold and such, but you see here, that baby's alive. Uh, we're gonna leave it alone and let it just do its thing until it decides it, oh, it actually wants to come out. Uh, but yeah, weirdest thing I've ever had happen, honestly, breeding crested geckos. You saw it squirm. There, oh my, is it gonna hatch? What the? No way. Oh my goodness, it's gonna hatch on camera. What is happening? No way! What the? What? 
Okay, well, I guess I could have expected something like this to happen. Ah! Look at you go! Wow, you're gorgeous! Okay, I'm so sorry, little buddy. I did not mean to, uh... I did not mean to do that. I feel terrible for disturbing you. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, guys. I, I had, uh, you know, checked on this baby the same way I showed you guys a few times now because I just was so scared that it would pass away. I did not expect that to happen at all. That was, that was quite something. Okay, the topic of this video was going to solely be about Pingu's babies, but apparently now we're also introducing Nona and Rambo's first hatchling. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Now everybody, again, please allow me to explain. This baby started pipping and then just didn't hatch within 24 hours, which is never a good sign. I'd been checking on the egg, I made that little extra slit, and I did realize the animal was still alive, but then the concern became mold growth or decay of the yolk and other materials in the egg, so I became concerned of the well-being of that hatchling, but also decided to sort of detach myself of any result because I knew that there was maybe a good chance it wouldn't make it. After waiting about a week, I decided to check on it again and realized it was still alive. Now, it stayed in the egg after gently nudging the baby, and so having done this a second time for you guys to show you that it was alive, I wasn't expecting the offspring to emerge from the egg or erupt the way it did, but it happened now and I do really feel weird about it. I feel bad. A lesson learnt, I suppose. The baby can stay in the egg for some time, even if you've cut it open, I guess, but this is a weird experience and I just want to document it as always and share it with you all. My my main concern at this point is that the animal hatched prematurely, so I'll keep a close eye on them. Okay, so now that's all done, here are Pingu and Rambo's two newest babies. And man, they are gorgeous. Look at the backs on these guys. They're super dark, really, really lovely backs on these babies. It would be super nice to get one with a, a full solid pin, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's, it's always so... <laughs> It kind of stinks when you're that close to a full pin back, but uh, these babies are gorgeous. They're gonna look awesome as they age. Let's have a look at this one here. So there they are. Gorgeous, gorgeous gecko, if I may say. Like, look at that baby. Woo, super pretty. Oh, this one is crazy. That white fringing on the pinstripe. Oh, be nice to each other, okay? Yeah, they, they just look super, super nice. So let's get them into their bins before they freak out too much. You know the drill. Time to set up some baby crested geckos. Okay, everybody, so as always, we have our bin set up here. We've drilled the sides for ventilation. We've cut out the top here for a bit of extra ventilation. Drilled a few more holes in the lid. This will be where the baby lives. I keep things fairly sterile for offspring. So we line the base with a sheet of paper towel. From here, we'll give a gentle spritz to the paper towel so that it sits more securely. And now we'll add some branches for climbing and enrichment. These are just some sterile maple wood branches that I had. And then lastly, we'll add some foliage and this will create a sense of security and safety for the baby gecko. Now all we need to do is add a very shallow water dish. I only fill these up about halfway to be on the safe side and our gecko is ready to enter its new home. It's that easy. Now we'll just make another one for its sibling and then we'll be on our way to putting the animals into their enclosures. Naturally, the babies are going to get their feeding cups, but again, I don't put food in them for the first few days because they're usually not interested in eating yet. Okay, time for the fun part. Let's put our new babies into their future homes. I'll put my little labels on that show the animal's initial weights. And they're set to go.
friends, I'm not gonna lie, pretty concerned about this new baby here that just hatched, known as first. The one that I potentially made hatch prematurely. We're gonna see how it goes. I'll keep a close eye on the baby, but I don't have super high hopes. So this is one of the hardships that can sometimes come with breeding animals. You just have to be ready for things like this. Naturally, I'll love and cherish and take good care of it and give it the best chance it can get, but still, pretty stressful experience here. As always, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my newest channel patrons over on the Patreon platform. Since my last video, we have two new channel patrons. I want to thank Jan for becoming my newest channel patron. Thank you so much for your support. As well as... <clears throat> to nowhere you don't have a name on your account so that's what I have to say if that's your username thank you so much to both of you for becoming my two newest patreon members you guys are amazing I really appreciate all my patrons support it goes such a long way into making more and more things move smoothly with the channel and don't forget that you unlock different tiers you have a direct line of communication with me lots of interesting perks that come along with that contribution if you're interested in learning about how you can become a channel patron you can check out the link down below and learn about how you can support the channel for as little as two dollars a month it's been a very busy time for me the last few days because as you all know i just got back from my trip and i've been playing catch up in the reptile room addressing a bunch of things that need to be worked on and as you all know i'm going to be heading down to minneapolis with my good friend nadim we're going to Snake Discovery, we're gonna be seeing Emily and Ed and a bunch of awesome other content creators that you may recognize. So it's gonna be really nice seeing everybody after so long and meeting many of those creators who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person yet. So it's gonna be a blast. I really appreciate some of the messages you guys have been sending me, wishing me the best of luck for the Scape Off Challenge. Obviously I'm gonna try really hard, but I'll be honest, I'm just looking forward to getting to know everybody and spending time down there with these other incredible and passionate hobbyists and content creators. All in all, it's gonna be a hit. And I know that if you guys wanna see what goes on down there, you can check out Snake Discovery, Emily and Ed's channel because they're gonna be filming everything. And rest assured that I'm also going to be producing at least one video for the trip, maybe even more. Nadim's gonna be filming, very gracious for his service. So friends, without further ado, I wanna say thank you so much for watching today's video. It means so much to me to have your support and viewership on this channel. If you guys enjoyed learning about and seeing the new hatchlings and you wanna see more content pertaining to crested geckos, their care, feeding them, etc., check out the playlist up above. And otherwise, I can't wait to see you all for our next video. I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now, I haven't filmed my Mr. is going off, let's just wait a second. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't filmed that video yet. So if it doesn't come out, I apologize. There'll be a video on Friday of next week, but I'm kind of scrambling to get ready for this trip. We leave very shortly, so. Okay, take care everybody. Have an awesome weekend, bye.